Welcome back everyone, I'm the Depressed Eeyore and this is Lancaster Mobile. Alright, uh, it's a new month so we do have a new banner with uh, two new characters. Um, there's also some new um, exclusives. Uh, we have one for, I believe the other one's for McLean. Uh, the one I did purchase is for Risen Seal. It's a helmet, increases HP as well as increases healing based off the number of crystal stacks that you have. Um, Upon her death, she will automatically do a heal for everyone uh, within two blocks, which is kind of nice. Um, not sure if it's better than 10 years, but I went ahead and replaced it regardless. And uh, that's kind of it. Oh, I, I guess other news, I didn't really show this on uh, on screen, but um, there was a wish banner where you can like set what, what the two characters are for the banner. Um, and I used that to kind of pick up some characters I was missing. Um, I ended up picking up... Who all did I pick up? I know I picked up one other character. Um, I ended up pick it, uh, picking up Kruger while I was trying to get um, Theon. And um, pretty much I needed Theon just so I can get the um, max bonds for, uh, t uh, for Tatalia. So she's all good to go. Anyway onto the main course. Um, oh yeah, I guess the new season of Apex is uh, upon us as well. So I did change up the box quite a bit and it'll probably uh, be my undoing. But uh, I'll save that for when I actually do Apex matches. Anyway, uh, I went ahead and just knocked out my friendship summon for the uh, for the day and uh, we got Hope Beyond Dimensions uh, which has uh, Tormalik, how should you pronounce it? And uh, the other character is um, Elise. So we'll just take one of each. I I looked up these characters a while back. Um, uh, Tor Malik is a mage that has origin faction. Um, I think she probably has the same issue as most mage uh, most mages in the fact that she doesn't. I don't think she has any expanded range. And uh, Elise here is a, like a holy cavalry type that can get a bunch of act, act agains um, using her little fancy keys. Um, neither of which I've really seen in Apex matches, but I haven't really been keeping track lately. Anyway, we'll dive right in. Um, I believe they are both that are needed for each other's bonds, and I think that's kind of just the gist of it. Anyway. So uh, last month our our uh, luck was not fantastic. So here here's hoping. We had like a, we had a numerous off banners as well as uh, lots of pities last time. Alright, that was 50 summons, I believe. So, at least on pace. こんにちは。同じ道を歩む者。我が名はトミルク。長い時を徘徊する傍観者という点で、あなたと同じですね。All right, so we got Tor Malik. The omniscient, the silent bystander, witnesses the beginning and end of a thousand stories. So 
So we just need a lease now. I mean, if we get duplicates, that's fine, but I don't really plan on using these characters. Uh, Tormalik's factions are just not a good fit. I think it's like Yilis, Mythical, and Origins, which Origins is the only one I have a faction buff for. And uh, my latest box doesn't actually use Freya anymore. That's 40. Oh, ran out of vouchers. Fifty again. Unfortunately, we only have a forty percent chance to get what we want. Another Tormalik. Alright, well, keep this uh, keep this train going. Uh, so yeah, the bonds for Tormalik is Elise for one of them, and uh, Jessica for the other, which everyone has Jessica. Oh, just a one-off. Oh, wow. Alright, another Tormalik. They really want me to use her. I've already switched off of majority of my mages. I mean, I appreciate it. Oh my, really? I don't even have Freya in my, in my box anymore. I mean, she can still be used with that off faction, but like I mentioned before, she I don't think she she doesn't have expanded range. I don't think, which is pretty much a death knell for most mages. All right, twenty summons. I mean, our Tormalik is 5 star right now. <laughs> I'll point that out. Another Tormalik. At this rate. Alright. Yeah, I mean, we're two away from completely maxing out Tormalik at this at this point. No sign of an Elise. I really, really don't want to go for uh, the ultimate pity, which is getting six-star Tormalik and an additional um, two just so I can convert. All right, another 20 summons. Another Tormalik. So yeah, one more and she's literally, uh, she's done. <laughs> Sure, what to think of this luck because our rate's really, really good right now. I mean, at this point, even if we hit Petty, it's gonna still balance out pretty good. That last SSR was we were on average um, one SSR every 30 summons, which was probably the best rate I've had in a while. A 
think I, I think that's 40 right there. We're up to 60 now. At this point, I'm expecting an off banner or two for one. I was hoping this would be a quick part so I could just immediately go into uh, Awakenings. But yeah, I'd, even if I wanted to use Tormalik, there's not really any room for her in my box. I think this is pity now. After the previous three, I'm not going to complain. I will complain in a second, though. And that's now I'm going to complain. <laughs> so, yeah, we officially now have. Um, we have a six-star Tomal League. It's been a while since I've had this sort of weird luck. The only thing that would make the the only time I've had this be worse was trying to get Betty, just for completion's sake. And it ended up being like this, and I ended up getting a six-star Ares. But that one, I was going multiple pities as well, so it was a very, very expensive uh, banner. But yeah, I do want to go ahead and get at least now and get it over with. And honestly, our rate's been so good, I'm actually okay with doing the ultimate pity and doing the convert the, the conversion. Yeah, 250 summons to cap out a Tourmalik is pretty ridiculous. Here I was hoping. And at least now I don't have to worry about her, um... Gate of Fate. I'll still need to do them, unfortunately, which means I'll just get some extra useless shards. I mean, you can convert them into a space time essence, but I have plenty of that. That might have been 80 or 90. I'll just say 80. Alright, 
the last night guardian, a guardian fulfilling a contract who finds great power again amidst a desperate situation. So yeah, um, that honestly that went as good as could be. Um, we ended up getting a capped out Tormalik and we didn't get any extras. We'll end up getting a few extra shards just from doing Gate of Fate, but beyond that, that's alright. I didn't really want to spend this many summons, but the rate has been really good. Um, just to get the final tally here. Uh, 100, 200, 300, 330 summons get, got me uh, 7 Tormaleeks and 1 Elise, so about every 40 or so summons, give or take. Um, it's definitely around 40 summons uh, was the rate, so it wasn't bad. No off banners. So, um, give me a moment and we'll briefly go over the characters. All right, that took me a bit. Uh, before I dive into new characters, there are some new inscriptions. Um, I don't remember all of them, but one of them I can actually do uh, right now. Assuming I can find her. There you are. Uh, Florentia now has this. Plus 5 intelligence, and when using Resounding Might, if this unit has a fusion power effect, uh, the skill cooldown is decreased by 2. So that's helpful. Alright, uh... So, let's go ahead and go over the characters. Uh, we'll, we'll start with Elise. Uh, I don't have her fully decked out. Uh, I don't have um, any spear casting patterns, and I don't have any. I don't have enough heavy armor, but I don't intend on using her. Um, I did use her, of course, for um, the Gate of Fates, and she's actually pretty interesting. So, mobility is unaffected by terrain. Uh, defense increases by 5%, attack increases by 2% for every one block moved. Um, starts with one key, uh, or one key of protection. After taking action, they can it can be consumed to place a key of protection in a target location. After she takes action, if she is on an allied key of protection, the um, terrain effect is removed, and then she can move four additional blocks and attack again. Uh, this effect can only trigger once per turn, and any buffs on the caster do not lose their turn count. Uh, the key lasts for two turns and can only be cast again after being removed. Allied uh, key of protection cannot be placed within three blocks of each other. When a key of protection is placed on defensive terrain, it, ma it maintains higher terrain uh, uh, coverage priority. So yeah, she can throw out these little keys and use those as act agains, essentially, which are pretty cool. Um, but of course, if the enemy stands on top of it, they, they can kind of ruin things a little bit. Um, she does have this uh, her unique abilities. Um, she does have the ability to steal random buff from an enemy, uh, from all enemies with one, one ring range. And if a key is within this range, she can remove that key to act again and trigger that effect. So that's a way to get around that other that issue if someone stands on it. Um, she also has an AOE, uh, do, 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 does decrease down and magic def defense down, which is actually pretty cool. Um, if the enemy is on an allied key of protection, the da it will do additional damage, which is pretty cool. So if they do stand on it, you can AoE them harder. Uh, besides that, she kind of just has mostly standard stuff. Um, in the Gate of Fate, she casts shield, but apparently she doesn't actually know shield. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I fully upgraded. Uh, you do have a choice between either her um, cavalry or her holy. Uh, cavalry, I believe, has more attack. Uh, but uh, Holy has more HP and defensive stats. Also, it's a Holy class, so you don't have to deal with weaknesses. Um, so that's usually kind of the go-to. Also, her being Holy class means she gets access to Tenuous Headdress. Uh, she can still equip Heavy Armor, all that stuff, and still be able to use um, Spears. I'm, she might be able to use Swords as well. Uh, yeah, she can use Swords. Anyway, I just threw uh, Routing Lights, Tiamat's Blessing, Tenu's Headdress, and Overlord's Badge, and gave her a bunch of Breeze. Um, anyway, we'll go ahead and dive into Awakenings. Years go by, and my oath lives on. I will face the demons in the long night, upholding my enduring oath amidst the desolation. You said it. Uh, troop choices. Um, she kind of has just kind of the 
stuff you kind of expect from cavalry mixture of griffins angels mechanical dragons unicorns templar knights heaven's guard so pretty good stuff you don't actually need unicorns because you have terrain mastery so let's give let's give you heaven's guard uh luna young jessica and an one All right. And you're dead. So, um, Heaven's Guard does extra damage. Or I think they get a boost in stats based off the number of tiles they move. And then, of course, the, st the uh, spear I'm using also does extra damage um, based off the number of tiles she moves. Is. Um, you can go there. Alright, my stuff is still on cooldown, but that's okay. Alright, you should be able to go a few extra steps. I'm actually going to go ahead and just stay here. I'll throw a spear here. Should do that. I haven't really been watching Chinese matches, so I don't know if she's actually using Apex. I'm pretty sure she's not. But she is an interesting character. Alright. Uh, as the Guardian decides to break through the shackles of the, of the mind, an ancient destiny will lead me on a new journey to find the portal. Oh wow, I get uh, Clotaire right off the bat. Um, as well as Malta Muller. Okay, she's using Thousand Hoes and Smash. Oh yeah, right, I can, I can use those, can't I? Sure, why not? All right, uh, yeah, let's just dive into this. I am not that familiar with Clotaire. Well, I, I know what he does, but I've never actually used him before. Okay, so she does, he doesn't have the the, the wider AoE, it doesn't look like. Oh, and at higher um, stars, it looks like she gets two keys that she can throw out. Can she throw them both out? No clue. Alright. Alright, how long is your AoE? Five spaces? One, two, three, four, five. Whoa. So here, one, two, three, four, five. So that goes all the way. Cool. So really the only person I need to worry about is Clotaire. So we'll just play it safe and do something like this. Oh, we do need to be careful about... Uh... Those annoyances. Okay. 
Okay. Oh wow. Okay, you're just gonna stick with guarding, huh? Alright, so I can't really do anything with that key then. Okay, you are guarding. Oh, actually, I can make this work. But we'll deal with that in a second. Okay, yeah, we'll do this first. I'm not sure who's going to guard this. Okay. And then I can move on top of this and then act again from there. Okay, that's all the guards. Okay, quick and easy. This going. Alright. Uh, when Trigrain Talents act again, recover 30% HP and gain, uh, gain damage dealt increase. Um, attacks a single enemy in a straight line, which has a uh, 2 range, dealing 1.6 times damage. This attack ignores 30% of defense. Um, when equipped with melee soldiers, they will also attack. After a battle, causes displacement, uh, pushes them back two spaces, and does mobility down. Cannot be dispelled. If the enemy is pushed into another enemy, uh, another unit, or an inaccessible terrain, they are rendered unable to take action on their next turn. Cannot be dispelled. After attacking, can move another two space blocks in straight lines, and gain damage taken decreased by 20%. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, this can actually kind of do a number to tanks. Sort of. Displacement's kind of weird. Because um, it doesn't work when you uh, against something that's guarded. But still, it's a... Uh, does some pretty interesting things. Alright, so... Next. Tormil uh, Tormilk? I think is how you pronounce it. I don't know. Tormik? I think in the... Um, Wiki Gersers, it's Tormerk or something like that, but I don't know. Or Tormerk. But I'm just gonna quit while I'm ahead. Anyway, also, I didn't even look at the factions for uh, what's her face, Elise. Um, her factions are Meteor, uh, Yilis, and uh, Mythical. Alright, back to you. Alright, uh, so Origins, Yilis, and uh, Mythical. Um, so I thought she was only um, mage, uh, mage classes, but she does have access to Holy Class, so she can get buffed by Lightbringer. Um, intelligence increased by 20%, this is on 6 stars of course. Um, starts with 2 per uh, Perceptual, 
and two rational. When perceptual is greater than or equal to rational, gain plus one range. And uh, after actively attacking and dealing damage, restore HP uh, to nearby allies. Uh, when rational is greater or equal, you get plus one range. And uh, when initiating battle, you'll deal fixed damage uh, before battle. After an ally unit takes action, if they actively attacked on their turn, convert one rational into perceptual. Otherwise, convert uh, convert the other way. Uh, can't be dispelled. Ignores immunity. Can stack a total combined of a uh, combined total of four times. So out of the at the start of a battle, um, where she has two and two, um, she can actually um, she actually has four range. Uh, otherwise, she generally fl floats around three range, which is actually not that bad. I thought she didn't have any range increasing stuff. Um, she also has a one cost skill that will convert her um, whatever's higher to the uh, the other type. Um, gives herself uh, damage dealt increase and uh, damage taken when actively attack it, attacking and reflect damage is reduced and she can move two additional blocks and act and attack again so yeah with the plus four range plus three or four range and this she actually has pretty good range which is pretty neat it's just her factions are kind of awkward um, she does have a single target uh, two range deals 1.5 times damage it also does additional effects based off perceptual and rational um, if, if perceptual is greater or equal, um, the spell's two buffs. Otherwise, it will ignore 20% of magic defense. Uh, besides that, she does get access to uh, cleanse, as well as demolish and uh, heaven sanction. She does get mass protect if you care about that. Anyway, um, gear-wise, I just kind of gave her whatever I had laid around. Gave her um, breeze just to give her more mobility. Um, and her casting patterns are all maxed out. All right. Let's go ahead and awaken. As the cycle of time continues and life persists, I witness your story in silence. Don't say. Alright. Uh, hello, Betty. Hilda. And uh, Lana. That's uh, quite the combination. So yeah, I can just kill you. Since I was already balanced, I, did, I got um, the fixed. I got pretty much all the benefits. Fortunately, she is going to self res. Is this the first time I've had to fight something self resing in an awaken battle? I don't remember. Alright. I am just out of range. Nope, I oh forgot my staff. Alright. So yeah, she's got good range. But I'm not doing a caster team any or not full caster team anymore. Also, I've never seen you run out of pure shining, shining hearts before. That is new. Can we fix that, please? Thank you. I do appreciate the extra the additional sub menu there. That's yeah. I guess I'll have to make an effort to grind those. I never. I didn't realize I had ran out. The brilliance of civilization flashes before my eyes in this moment to allow me to offer a wordless prayer for the dawn of the new world. Hello, Vargas. Vargas, Sherry, and uh, Leon, of all people. And you're using Elf Masters for whatever reason. So Vargas shouldn't be able to guard anything. You can only guard physical. So yeah, we're just gonna hit everyone with violence. Uh, it does give plus twenty percent damage. 
Nah, we'll just do it. We'll do it raw. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately you're not going to be able to do anything this round. And you don't have chivalry. That's a pity. Oh yeah, I forgot about your steward range. Okay, well that could have gone better. So I have more rational. Got it. Alright. あなたの決断を待ちます。あなたの決断を待ちます。任せろ。準備完了です。Okay, disable your guard. So you have to get kill to actually get act, uh, extra actions. Can you actually get kill though? Yes, you can. Alright, can't do anything this round. Oh, you're guarding. Well, that was awkward. Okay. Oh, didn't realize I was going to get Gale there. Alright. One person alive is still a win. Alright, so we get her Dawn of the Unbound. Alright, so what's this got for us? After taking action, if perceptual is equal to rational, the cooldown of skills use this turn or reduced by one. Um, attacks a single enemy doing 1.7 times damage. Also gains an additional effect based off the perceptual and rational. Um, it will either dispel three buffs or apply three random debuffs. Uh, if this attack is not guarded after battle, applies a teleport effect. Teleports the enemy to a random location within three blocks away from the caster. After using this skill, converts all perceptual and rational into the other based on whichever is higher. That's interesting. Yeah, being able to displace a tank can definitely... It's random is the biggest issue. But yeah, that's kind of interesting. This yeah, this made, this character is actually kind of interesting. Unfortunately, I don't think I've seen her be used in PvP. But, like I said, the factions make it a little difficult. Also, she's just competing with so many other characters now. But, 
I mean, she is six stars, so I may consider, consider just trying her out. But uh, that is it for me. Um, yeah, Apex is starting this week, so it's probably possibly next Monday you guys will actually see some Apex matches with my very horrible box. So, until next time, I'm Theodore Restito, this is Langshire Mobile, I'll see you guys next time.